Hi everybody, Steve here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, California. And I'm at the last place I ever would have expected to find a gravesite of one of the survivors of the RMS Titanic, which tragically sunk after hitting an iceberg on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York on April 15, 1912. It's hard to believe that this tragic historic event happened 109 years ago. As many of you who watch my channel on a regular basis know, I've been visiting and exploring this cemetery for decades now, and I've walked by this private family mausoleum hundreds of times. It's in a very prominent location, which you'll see when I pan around. And in all of these years, I never knew that one of the survivors from the Titanic was laid to rest here. And I only discovered this by accident while researching the gravesite of someone else. After discovering this gravesite, I became curious to know if there were any other Titanic survivor gravesites here in Southern California. Once again, to my surprise, I located a couple of others. And I'll share my visit to those gravesites next. Walter Miller Clark and his wife Estelle were in Europe on a belated honeymoon when they decided to cut their trip short and to return home to the U.S. early on the brand new luxury ocean liner, the Titanic. An estimated 2,224 passengers and crew were on board when the ship hit an iceberg and eventually sank. Walter Clark, who was 27 years old at the time, went down with the Titanic and his body was lost at sea. This plaque is a memorial marker to his memory. More than 1,500 people died as a result of that tragic accident, making it the deadliest peacetime sinking of a superliner to date. Walter's wife Estelle was one of the lucky survivors. She escaped the disaster on lifeboat number four and went on to live a long and presumably happy life. She died here in Hollywood on December 21st, 1958 at the age of 72 and is interred here in the Clark family mausoleum. Estelle and Walter's son, James Ross Clark II, is also interred here. He died in Palm Springs, California at the young age of 51 on February 24, 1962. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a cause of death or any other additional information about his death. Sadly, Walter Clark's sister, Ella, also died young. She was only 43 when she died here in Los Angeles on October 5, 1922, just a decade after her brother died on the Titanic. This wealthy and prominent family certainly seems to have had more than their fair share of tragedies over the years. And once again, I wasn't able to dig up any additional information about how she died either. If any of you watching happen to know how either of them died, please share with us down in the comments section. And I'm just walking around the back here to see if there's anything else to see. The cemetery shows movies here on the white wall directly across the street from the mausoleum. And I wonder if they've ever shown the movie Titanic here and talked about the Titanic survivor who's laid to rest here in the mausoleum facing the movie screen. Talk about bringing history to life and making it very personal. And again, if any of you happen to know if they have shown the film here, please share that with us in the comments section down below as well. The next Titanic survivor gravesite that I was able to find here in the Southern California area is located at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City. It's about 15 minutes west of here. So according to Find a Grave, there's a Titanic survivor gravesite right here in Section 8 here at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. Not a lot of other information. There's no GPS. There's a photo that shows where the gravesite is in relationship to the mausoleum. So I'm going to use that to try to help me find the gravesite. So let's go see if I can find it. Section H is also called the Our Lady of Perpetual Help section. And the curbs here in this cemetery are very well marked, making it much easier to find whoever you are looking for, unlike so many of the other cemeteries that I've visited over the years. As you can see, this is a very large area, and I've been walking up and down the rows for about a half hour now, using the photos on her Find a Gray Memorial page as landmarks, and I think I finally found her gravesite. Not only did Edwina Cecilia Trout McKenzie survive the sinking of the Titanic, but as you can see here from her headstone, she lived to be 100 years old. And even though it's pretty faded now, her epitaph reads, a Titanic survivor. Standing here, I just added a GPS to her Find a Grave Memorial page to make it easier for future visitors to find and pay their respects. 
This is one of those grave sites that really does inspire a sense of awe. The feelings of elation and gratitude to have survived such a horrendous experience, coupled with the devastating knowledge that so many others didn't survive, is difficult to even imagine. In doing a little bit of research about these Titanic survivors, I discovered that Edwina's story about her Titanic survival is shared on the website Encyclopedia Titanica. She was born in Bath, England on July 8, 1884, and on April 10, 1912, she boarded the Titanic to visit her sister in Auburndale, Massachusetts. It's believed that she was rescued before the Titanic sank in lifeboat number 16. In 1916, she moved here to Southern California, and during her long life, she was married three times. Because she was a Titanic survivor, in 1974, on her 90th birthday, she received a congratulatory birthday letter from then-President Richard Nixon. The thing that surprised me the most about Edwina, though, is that even after surviving one of the worst shipwrecks in history, she chose to travel back to England by passenger ship nearly a dozen more times during her life. Now that's what I call tempting fate. What's especially interesting to me about this gravesite is that this woman not only survived the sinking of the Titanic, but then she went on to live to be a hundred years old. Talk about a weird fate, right? I mean, she just was not meant to go before her time. She must have had some things she needed to do here. The next Titanic survivor gravesite that I'm visiting today is located here at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. It's about 22 miles northeast of Holy Cross Cemetery. Almost all the way to the back of the cemetery near the top of the hill in the Eventide section is the final resting place of Titanic survivor Edward Pennington Calderhead. Calderhead lived to be 91 years old, dying on April 5th, 1961. It's just about halfway down the hill here from the Court of Freedom mausoleums. There wasn't too much information on his Find a Gray memorial page, but it did list the section and the number, and it was very helpful. There was no GPS, but I just added one. His headstone doesn't mention the Titanic at all. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's, I find it really hard to wrap my head around the fact that someone could have survived that horrible, awful, tragic event, and then lived to be 91 years old. Lived a long life after that. Let me pan around here and give you a better idea of where this gravesite is located. Off in the distance there to the west, I believe those are high rises in Century City just past Hollywood. And if there weren't so many large trees in this section, you could also see a beautiful view of downtown Los Angeles. Calderhead escaped the sinking ship on lifeboat number five. One of the biggest tragedies of this accident is that there were only 20 lifeboats for more than 2,000 passengers and crew, and not all of the lifeboats were even operational. If you're wondering, like I was, who the last living Titanic survivor was, her name was Milvina Dean, and she died on May 31st, 2009, at the age of 97. It seems kind of ironic how so many of these survivors live such extra long lives. At only two months old, Milvina was the youngest person on board the ship. What a way to start a life. She died in Ashurst, Hampton, England, and her cremated remains were scattered in Southampton, England, where the Titanic departed 97 years earlier. How's that for a symbolic gesture of a life coming full circle? This week, I'd like to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my newest Patreon supporters, Rob Roy Martin, Bev Cran, and William Counts. Thanks so much, Rob, Bev, and William, for your extra generous donations to my channel. They are very appreciated. So if you enjoyed today's historic trip to the past, I hope you'll join me by clicking and watching this one here. Until next time, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.